What is a fascinating fact or thought that makes your appreciation for the universe overflow? Wow. So that's a deep question. That's, be that's it's beautiful. Yeah. That's a beautiful question. I bask in our collective ignorance on the frontier of the unknown. Look behind me and say, hey, we got that. I look in front of me and say, we have no idea what that is. What keeps me awake at night and has me run back to my office every morning is the prospect that we could be on the heels of a major discovery, answering a question that we might have posed already, but possibly revealing a question we had not previously known to ask. That's my muse, my cosmic muse. I feel you overflowing. <laughs> <laughs> I had to give an overflowing answer. Would you venture to think that if there are people there, that they could see us the same fuzzy way we see them? Oh, by all means. Oh, yeah. I think about that all the time. Yeah. In fact, if there, were, if there was intelligent life there and they had detectors and they're looking our way, they would see us not as we are, but as we were two million years ago. Because that light is only just now reaching them. Wow. So they would not see signs of what we would call intelligence on Earth. Yeah. They well, would see very. If, I, I if don't, they saw us now, they wouldn't see those signs. It's so unconcluded. <laughs> <laughs> the most distant thing you can see with the naked eye is our nearest red-blooded galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy. Mm -hmm. And for the longest while, until the early 1920s, it was called the Andromeda Nebula because it was just this fuzzy thing in the night sky among the stars that trace out the constellation Andromeda. So we named it after Andromeda. And then with better and better telescopes, you say, wait a minute, this thing is composed of stars. Wait a minute, this thing is far away. Wait a minute, this is an entire other galaxy. It's not just a fuzzy thing in the Milky Way, it's another Milky Way. Well, how far away is it? It was not close, quote, close like these stars we see in the night sky. This is outside of our entire galaxy. The stars you see in the night sky are tens, hundreds, a few, or thousands of light years away. The Andromeda galaxy is two million light years away. And you can see that with the naked eye. You're not seeing an individual star. You're seeing hundreds of billions of stars, the muddled, muddied light, the blended light of hundreds of billions of stars that comprise the Andromeda galaxy. That is the farthest object visible. Would you? The unaided eye. And, and you can't see that from New York or any light, no, light polluted no, place. No. Just go out in the countryside. Uh, it'll be there. What would be the single most alarming thing that I could see with the naked eye? I don't know. I didn't know what the single most alarming thing I could ever see with the naked eye was until I saw it, mm -hmm. which meant I did not anticipate it. Okay, you ready? Yep. Uh, this is 1999. I'm on the Brooklyn Bridge at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm looking up. There's a meteor shower. Mm. Okay? Meteor showers are best typically after midnight. So there I am, and Brooklyn Bridge is a nice, you're away from lights. It's still very lit, but you're away from lights as good as you can. I'm a city person. It's the best I can do. Mm -hmm. And I'm there, and I'm looking up, and I'm seeing this meteor shower. It's called the Leonid Meteor Shower. And you see the streaks of light. They're shooting stars. Yes. It's beautiful. We're getting like three or four per minute. Mm -hmm. This is a good rate. I saw a new star in the sky. I said, I don't recognize that star. And it just got brighter and brighter and brighter. And then it disappeared. Then I saw a puff of smoke. And I said, whoa! Whoa. Okay. So you know what just happened? No. You don't know what you don't know what I just witnessed. It, sounds it like was a, a meteor oh. that was headed straight towards me. And it disintegrated. And it disintegrated straight towards me. There was no streak. There was no and I thought to myself, this is the final moment of my life. It's the best way you could go. <laughs> I guess in all fairness. <laughs> I mean, it's the most appropriate way. We are so accustomed to seeing streaks of light mm -hmm. in the sky. And some of those are going to be headed straight for you. And they're not going to make a streak. They're just going to get brighter. That when I realized a split second after that had happened, what I just witnessed, I freaked out. I mean, not in a psycho, I just intellectually freaked out. Right. And I said, damn, that's what that's going to look like. Can you explain why some of the planets in our solar system rotate in the opposite direction? Retrograde is what they call it. Yeah, yeah. So the planet Uranus, for example, <laughs> its axis 
is tipped 98 degrees. So it's rotating upside down. If, so if you take something turning, and then I turn it, and then I flip it, it's still turning. Yeah. Who am I to say that's upside down? That's right. basically your question, yes. right? It's because of the right hand rule. So hold up your right hand in front of you, like you're gonna shake someone's hand. Nice. Good, okay. Now stick your thumb up. Mm -hmm. That's the axis of rotation. Mm -hmm. Now curl your fingers. Your thumb is pointing north. Yes. No, I'm declaring that. Okay. By tradition. If you go to the planet and curl your fingers in the direction it's rotating, your thumb is gonna point north on that planet. Right. Okay? So, if I take Uranus with my thumb up and fingers curled, and I then tip my thumb so it's pointed downwards, mm -hmm. Uranus is cur turning back the other way. That's what defines the north of an object the right hand rule, just by convention. So their south is our north. Correct. So they're Australia. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think the single most important discovery in the history of physics is and why? The existence and the consequence of E equals MC squared on the arc of the universe. There is no understanding of matter and energy in the universe without that equation. Stars would not produce energy. There would have been no Big Bang. The, everything we take for granted in this universe owes its foundation to e equals mc squared, the equivalence of matter and energy in the universe. Combine that with quantum physics, coming to understand how the universe works on its smallest scale made us badass. There is no creation, storage, or retrieval of information in the IT universe without an understanding of the quantum. So Albert Einstein it came up with E equals MC squared, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it took us how many, you know, centuries? Millennia. To get to, millennia to get there. And then from then to here, we just did so much in a short amount of time. Okay. Like, why were we so dumb before that? Okay. <laughs> it only looks that way. I have books from five years before E equals MC squared. Read those books and say, the discoveries of recent years are so vast and so amazing. We are lucky to be living in special times. That's what you sound like today. What a great time to be alive. Look at all the discoveries we've made. All I'm telling you is, when you're living in a great time, every year feels like you're living in a special time. Come back in 100 years, you'll say, those idiots back in 2019, what the hell did they know? Yeah, in 2017, I went to Chile they have observatories European, the, the European uh, ESA. Oh. Yeah, European Southern Observatory. Yes, I went there, and I spent two nights, three nights there. Isn't it magical? It is ridiculous. It is ridiculously magical at the top of a mountain when it gets dark and you see out, and it's just you and the cosmos. But I thought that I was going to look through telescopes and see things, because they have those giant there's no, there's no, there's no lenses. There's yeah, no, no they just shoot that. lasers, and I'm oh, like, oh, well, lasers, another thing we can do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You thought there'd be this giant eyepiece waiting for you to walk up. Yeah, to like it. I thought it would. I thought like this. I and saw you see these, the gates of heaven. Through I saw it. the pictures, and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna look through those. And like, yeah, no, you don't look through those. <laughs> it just sends us data, and I'm yeah. like, well, well, that's how's that help me? <laughs> it is truly magical to be on a mountaintop at night. It is pretty wild. Yeah.